This video is brought to you by Sailrite. Visit Sailrite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video, we'll show you how to recover some dining room chairs with faux leather or vinyl fabric from Sailrite. This is a very easy project that will bring new life to your chairs instantly. And not only will we show you how to recover these dining room chairs, but we'll also show using three different tools to cut the foam to size. And how to glue sections of foam together to save on costly foam. Let's get started. First, we need to calculate how much fabric we need and new foam, if required. To calculate for the required fabric and foam size, measure the chair's width and depth at the widest point. For the fabric, add at least two inches to each of the four sides. If you're using a 54 inch wide fabric, typically three quarters of a yard will cover two chairs. For the foam, it's typically a half inch wider on all four sides. This is an example for our size chair, which is 17 inches by 19 inches. We cut the fabric at least four inches larger in each direction and our foam one inch larger in each direction. Using our size example, if we wanted to finish six chair seats, we would order two yards of a 54 inch wide fabric and one sheet of a 36 by 82 inch sheet of foam. Now that we know how much fabric we need and foam if required, we can go to the Sailrite website and pick a decor and upholstery fabric. We're going to pick from the faux leather category here. We'll scroll down to fabric design and click on faux leather. These are the faux leather fabrics that we recommend for upholstery applications. We've chosen to use ultra leather. Ultra leather and Breeza are premium faux leathers. Choose Nagasoft for a less expensive vinyl fabric. Most dining room chairs require a one inch or two inch thick foam that measures 23 inches by 18 inches. Sayerite recommends using a high density foam. You can find that at the Sayerite website. These are generalizations for how much fabric and how much foam to order for dining room chairs. You may want to pause the video here to study this. Now it's time to remove the old fabric. Now that we have our materials, we need to remove the cushion from the chairs. Typically on the underside, you'll find screws. Simply remove the screws and the cushion and its backer board will fall off. It is best to remove the staples and the old fabric that was attached to the backer board. Here we're using Sayerite's tack and staple remover, but a screwdriver can be used here as well, then pliers to pull out the staples. A closer inspection of the foam reveals it's quite moldy, and when sat upon, it bottoms out. We're going to replace it. Closer inspection of the foam reveals what looks like a contoured edge around the perimeter, but that just happens naturally as the fabric compresses the edges over time. An alternative to removing all the staples, which can be time consuming, is to use a razor blade and cut directly in front of the staples, removing the fabric. However, this leaves a lot of excess fabric around the perimeter of your backer board and it may not sit flush against the bottom of the chair. If that's the case, you can take out the corners, which are typically built up, and leave the remainder. Cutting foam to size is rather easy. We're gonna show three techniques, or three tools, in which to do it. We've decided to replace the old foam. Here we've chosen a high-density polyurethane foam from Sayerite. This is a one inch thickness, which is perfect for dining room chairs. Using our backer board, we'll trace a line that's a half inch away from the backer board with a permanent marker. We'll show three ways to cut the foam. First, we're gonna use a professional foam cutter. It's called the Sayerite Blade Foam Saw. This foam cutter cuts beautifully on this high density foam, leaving a nice straight edge and consistent cuts, as you can see here in the video. The Sayerite blade foam saw has a base that's flat and has rollers on the bottom side, keeping your cut at almost a perfect 90 degree angle. Next, we'll show cutting the foam with an electric kitchen knife. It cuts into this foam nicely. You do have to keep it perpendicular to the foam so that you have a fairly nice straight edge. You can use the edge of the sacrificial table to keep the blade nice and straight. The results are good enough for a dining room chair, but the edges are not perfectly set at 90 degrees. Or you can use scissors. Because this foam is not very thick, it's easy to cut with scissors. Results are not nearly as good as the professional foam cutter or the electric kitchen knife, but it does work. 
so you don't have to buy one of those if you do not own one already. These slightly jagged edges will not hurt our overall appearance of our dining room chairs. Gluing sections of foam together is very common. Almost all professional shops do it. Foam is rather expensive and throwing it away is a waste of money. Here we've determined that we can use some of our scrap foam to make yet one more dining room chair cushion. We typically use foam lock spray adhesive available from Sayerite for polyurethane foam like this. It's the most reasonably priced foam adhesive that works exceptionally well. Both our surfaces have been coated with the adhesive and we've let it set up so that it becomes tacky. Now they can be bonded together. When adhering the two pieces of foam together, do it carefully because once they touch it is very difficult to remove them. Here it is lined up almost perfectly and no one will ever feel the joint. We've glued this scrap together in the same manner and now we'll try to rip it apart at the seam. Notice the foam rips before the seam does. Yeah, foam lock spray adhesive from Sayerite is that good. It's now time to take your faux leather or vinyl fabric and staple it to the surface. We're using ultra leather, which is a luxury or premium faux leather fabric available from Sayerite. It has the look and feel of the finest European calfskin. We've made the appropriate measurements for our cushion and have cut it out with scissors. Most upholstery vinyls like this are 54 inches wide, so you can get two up. We'll place our foam on our backer board and then place that on the underside of our fabric. We'll be using the Easy e pneumatic stapler from Sayerite to staple our fabric to the backer board. Beginning at the front edge, we'll start at the center position. We'll pull the fabric taut around to the backer board and staple about four to five staples at the center location on the front edge. For best results when tensioning the fabric, use your entire thumb, not just the tips of your thumb. This helps to tension the fabric evenly along its length. When those four to five staples are at the center location along the front, we can flip the board around to the back and follow that same procedure yet again. Since most vinyl fabrics don't have a particular weave or pattern, we don't have to worry about keeping it centered or keeping it so it doesn't curve on the outside surface of our fabric. If we had a pattern with the weave, there would be a particular process to do that, but here we don't have to worry about it. Since the front edge and now the back edge at the middle position is secured, we can now expand our stapling out to the edges, but we want to stop about an inch or two from reaching the corners. Inspect the surface of your fabric to be sure you're happy with it. You will not have all the fullness taken out because the sides have not yet been done. Now we'll repeat that process for the sides of the cushion. Here we're pulling our fabric taut and securing it at the center location with about four or five staples. Do the same for the opposite side. Be sure to inspect your work before you continue to make sure you're happy with the surface. This looks good. Continue stapling the sides up to the corners, leaving about two inches unstapled at the corners. Cut away any excess material that may get in the way. Cutting away a little bit of the excess at the corners can help the corners from bulking up. We'll finish the back corners first. They're not typically seen by as many people. There are a variety of ways to finish off a corner. This is one example. Your ultimate goal is to make it look good. Here we're creating a simple fold in the fabric at the back edge. Once you decide on a process for a particular corner, try to repeat it for the second corner and all other cushions. Here's what our back edge will look like. Now we'll concentrate on the front edge. Here Cindy pulls back the fabric and cuts a notch out of the corner of foam here. This creates a little bit of a rounded corner. Now the fabric is pulled back over, excess cut away, and here this corner will be a little bit different than the back corners. Watch. While Cindy is completing this task, let's talk about staplers. A heavy duty hand stapler can be used for this application. Hand staplers are usually spring loaded and your hand is what compresses the spring so they'll quickly tire your hand. That's not the case with a pneumatic stapler like this. Here this stapler has a half inch crown, meaning 
the top of the staple is a half inch rather than the standard 3 8 inch. Why is a half inch better than 3 8 inch? Well, a half inch crown will not easily staple through any soft vinyls. Now, ultra leather typically never has issues with that, but with other types of vinyls, you may have issues with the staple going actually right through the vinyl when you staple it. If at all possible, when upholstering, use a half inch crown stapler with a 3 8 inch leg length staple. If an edge has small bulges, those are typically areas that are not under the same tension as where it was stapled. Those areas can be fixed by pulling slightly on the fabric and stapling. This works out those bulges, giving you a consistently smooth edge. Stapling a dust cover to the bottom side of our backer board is an optional step. However, it makes the chair look good when it's flipped upside down. To give the underside of our chair a professional look, we're going to cut a cambric dust cover black to size. There's no need to do any hemming to the cut edge. Simply line it up along the bottom of the cushion and staple it in place. This cambric dust cover fabric will give it a professional look when the chair is turned over. Our backer board has threaded holes. We can simply see through the fabric or feel through it and then mark where those locations are. The chair's frame can now be positioned on the bottom side of our backer board and re-screwed into position. Those are all the steps you need to cover a chair with vinyl fabric or faux leather. Coming up next is the materials list and the tools that we use to finish this DIY project. If you have any questions about the type of foam to use or the fabric to use, be sure to give us a call or email us at Sailrite. We're glad to help. For other related videos to recovering a chair seat like this, click on a video here. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sayrite website or subscribe to the Sayrite YouTube channel. It's your loyal patronage to Sayrite that makes these free videos available. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayrite, thanks for watching.